Hello everyone and welcome back to Mixbus TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. I'm your host David and I hope you're having a great day. In this video I'll show you some good starting points and general guidelines on how to mix drums inside Superior Drummer 3 using its plugins. We'll go through basic EQ moves, reverbs, compression, saturation for every element and for the drum bus. Some tricks you can do with SD3 to set macro controls and set up parallel buses that I usually use in my mixes. Here we go. Okay, so let's start by listening to the track we are gonna work on. I picked a song with a very complex pattern, some of you might recognize it, but so that we have all the elements playing and I can show you EQs and compression and saturation and everything else for all the elements, kicks, snare, toms, a lot of cymbals. But let's listen to the track. Okay, so you get an idea. It's a very complex metal song, very well-known song. But let's start with the mixing. Let's take a look at the mixer of the default Rock Solid kit and what channels it gives us. Kick, snare, hi-hats, toms, overhead, ambient mic, mono room, comp, X-snare, X-snare 1 that I added, X-snare 2 that I added, X-snare comp, X-drive, X-sub comp and the output. In this video, I'm more concerned, guys, about giving you general guidelines for mixing EQ, compression, saturation, and reverbs so that you can apply or at least use them as a starting point for every drum. So I'm not gonna try to make this one sound at its best, even because we don't have the rest of the elements and it's not possible to mix a drum by itself and then stick it to the song. Mixing means mixing all the instruments together, but still, I hope this is gonna be useful. So let's start by listening to our kick, for example. Okay, Superior Drummer 3 gives us already a good sounding kick, but the first thing that I would do here is EQ. So I've already done it. Let's listen to before and after, and I'll explain you why. So as you can hear, it is already a lot better just with few EQ moves. This is a very common curb on a parametric EQ for kick in general. And I'm gonna explain you the thought process why these moves. So let's reset this one. And the first thing that I would do on a kick is to try to find, use the HPF filter and try to find the lowest useful frequency that I want on my kick drum. So I will usually start about here playing the kick turn up the Q so it resonates and we can hear where the fundamental is. Let's see about 60. If we go lower, you can hear there's nothing really useful for us down there. Here is too high, so let's say we set about around 60 Hertz. That's our fundamental and nothing below that, even considering there's gonna be a bass, it's not really useful. So we use this 24 dB per octave or 18, I'm usually going for 24 and the amount of boost at the corner frequency you decided with the Q. So if we play it again, This way we cut what we don't need 
but we boost right there at the corner frequency, which is the lowest useful frequency that we have on the kick. Now, if you notice when I was sweeping the frequency, we ran into some boxiness and that's the second move. We usually find on drums a boxy frequency around, it could be 500, 300, 400. So we look for it. Okay, it's about here. Now pay attention to one thing. If we remove too high or too much this mid frequency, the kick is gonna just be low end and top end and we don't want that. We need some meat, we need some voice on our kick to be intelligible in the mix. So pay attention to the frequency you're cutting and how much. Let me show you something. About 450, here is where the boxiness is. 500, 400. If I go too high, this might not sound good in solo, but we need this range 1K, 2K for the intelligibility of the kick inside the mix. So we cut about here, we remove the boxiness and our kick is immediately deeper. And then the last move, we add some click because this is supposed to be a metal song. So we know there's gonna be uh, a lot of guitars, a lot of mid high frequency elements, and we need the kick to be heard inside the mix. So a little bit of boost, a little bit of high end, where it depends on what kind of kick do you want. If you want a really clicky kick, you go really high. I'm not a big fan of that. It sounds a little bit fake for me. I like to usually boost a little lower but it depends on the song. Let's see about 6K, sounds about right. Let's listen to it with the rest of the drum. Now for me right now is a little bit unbalanced, uh, either has a little too much top end or a little too little low end. So let's try to tweak both and see what works. High end was right. Let's try low end. Better. Next thing on the kick, I usually compress a little bit. So let's open the compressor. Kicks usually, especially when you work with samples and stuff, don't need that much compression. You don't need compression for even out the hits, but you need compression for character. You want more attack, you want more sustain. That's what you wanna think when, when approaching a compressor on a kick drum. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. It's more aggressive, has more attack, has a more solid, more consistent low end. Let's take a look at the settings. I went for a ratio for really slow attack, a pretty fast release, and I used the sidechain filter so the compressor is not triggered and is not overworking because of all the low end energy here. And another thing to consider is low frequencies are slower. So I want the compressor to react to the click of the kick. But let's hear it in the mix. Okay. And we are actually reducing the overall level because we are compressing about six, seven dB and compensating just not even for two. So these are the basic moves I would do on the kick. Maybe I would add some distortion to it. By right now, I don't know if I wanna do it on parallel on my mono crush drum in which I will send kick and snare. You will see it in a minute. Or I will just parallel a distorted kick drum channel. Let's try and see what happens with some distortion on the actual kick channel. I'm looking for tone. When I add distortion, I want a color. 
of the kick if it needs a change. Okay, let's say I like this a little less. Let's do 0 0.5 and let's compensate a little bit for the increase in level. In this case, a little bit of distortion if it's the song, but it also just to show you guys. That was everything for the kick. Next up is the snare. So I would say the very first basic moves when mixing snares are the usual processing. EQ, compression, maybe enhancing EQ, saturation, and depending on the song, we want some sort of effect, maybe a uh, longer reverb or some sort of chorusy, something to expand the stereo image. And that is excluding adding more samples, of course. So on the mixer, aside from our direct signal, snare, X snare, X snare 2, we have X snare comp, X drive, and X sub comp. All the snares go also into overhead, ambient, and mono room comp channels. Let's take a look. One important thing on snare for me is the length, how long a snare is. Usually we tend to like in solo snares that are very snappy, they have a lot of attack and that works. But inside of a dense mix, maybe we don't realize while listening to the song, but the snare needs some tail. And it's usually more than you can hear inside the song if you solo it. So one thing that I like to do, we go back to the drum module, we select our stack and I use a macro control on Superior Drummer 3 to group the envelope of all three of them. So I have it in one knob. Let me show you that. So I'm going to open the envelope and offset tab, play the snare. Again, let's solo it. Okay. With this control, we decide how long the snare is. And I'm just doing this so I can show you. I right click on it and bind to macro. Then we click macro controls and you can see the macro parameter one has the release for all three snares. This is very, very useful for me. You can do that with kick, with toms. Let's play it. We can reduce the length of the snares, all three of them, with just one control. We can do that with toms too, for example. We can select all toms by holding control and clicking on them. Open the envelope again and bind this one to macro parameter two. Let's see if we can find a part where the toms are playing. Again, we can adjust the length of the toms with just one knob. So this is just a little trick you can use in Superior Drummer 3. Let's go back to the snare. Since that we have more than one direct snare sound, I want to group them and treat them as they are one. So all the EQ, all the compression that we are going to do, I'm going to treat the three samples as they were one snare. We send them to bus one and we work on that bus channel. This snare doesn't sound bad at all as is. So there's not much to correct here. Let's try to enhance some. A 
little more top. That part, we don't need it. Okay, something I like to do. Little boost. And taking out a little bit of cardboard. Which is around here, but not that much. Because we do need that. That's even too much. I feel like this snare doesn't really need compression, probably because we already have all these parallel channel. Um, so let's try to see if we have a transient designer, which we have here in Superior Drummer. Better. Okay, the transient designer is bringing up a little too much of this frequency here, so I'm going to put it back where it was. That's better. Okay, I like this. Now what we want to do is try to gain some headroom on this channel here on the snare because with the transient designer the level is going up and we are going to do that with distortion. Let's try with valve distortion box. Let's reduce the sustain a little bit. A little bit more crack. Without. Sits a little better. And let's turn the channel down and listen to it. The right level. Okay. That sounds about right. Disregard some missed triggers on the snare. This is just a MIDI track that I got. So please bear with me if there are some hits that are off. But yes, this goes to show you that if you have good samples to begin with, you don't really need that much mixing, as in EQ correction and stuff like that. In this case, we already had a lot of compression going on. So if you use Peter Drummer 3, the kits usually come with a couple um, parallel compression channels. Instead, what I'm gonna do is to show you a trick that I use on pretty much all my mixes, which is my mono drum crush bus. I usually send kick and snare to this bus and I compress the shit out of it with a slow attack and medium release. What I want from that channel is punch. Sometimes I send toms too. We will try to do that, but for now we just send kick and snare. So we select kick and snare, actually the two X snare two, and we send them to bus two, we call this drum crush, and we add a compressor to it. Actually, I'm gonna use the classic compressor because they have a low pass sidechain filter.
that's limit and the release is probably the most important parameter here we have a busy part so the release needs to be somehow fast now it's pumping nicely we don't even have to make up the volume because this is going to be low in the mix without all right from here let's adjust the overall volume of it let's listen to the track without it first with That sounds nice. What we can add is an enhancer and one that I like in Spirit Drummer 3. I think it's the 361. Let's listen to it. Without. That's enough. And we adjust the level of our drum crush to taste. All right, a lot more punchy. You might have to adjust the direct level of your uh, snare and kick when you add this one, but it has this very snappy attack. I love it. And let's take care of the toms. Let's try to find the part where the tom play. Let's solo them. They sound good, but they can definitely use some compression and maybe a basic cue. Again, as for the kick, let's cut what we don't need. Fundamental is pretty obvious, even just by looking at the analyzer. Boost. Here around 200 is actually nice. It doesn't sound boomy. We'll just leave it there and boost a little bit. As a different texture since we have all the toms in one channel. Let's look for the cardboard sound. These toms sound pretty nice. Let's make them a little more deeper by cutting there and top end. On toms. I don't mind a very high top end. Even because we are going to compress it, we're going to probably saturate them a little bit. That sounds okay. Now, let's go back to our macro and adjust the length. I want them tight, so that's fine. And we are gonna enhance the density with the compressor. Too much. I like the classic compressor here. Side chain. Let's stay about two ratio. That's okay. Just a little bit. And I want to add distortion to it. Not this kind of distortion. We could do this in parallel though. But for the direct signal, let's do 
this. Look at the level. We are taking care of some headroom there. Let's try something more aggressive. That's nice. I like this. And this is just an example. So let's settle for this one. Let's listen to the whole track. That's good. Let's adjust the level. Little less distortion. And let's create an additional parallel channel compression for toms. The one that we are sending to the drum crush is not enough. And I don't want to change the settings because I like what, what it's doing to kick and snare. So we do this with toms on their own. Better. That distortion now starts to be a little too much, so let's just bypass it. It was just to show you, you can do that. I don't want too much tail to come up, but some. Right, 76 works well on, on toms. Let's leave it at that. That sounds about right. And um, let's add again that, what it was. Punch Exciter. A little less wet. Just a little of that shiny top end. Little goes a long way. All right. Let's listen to... Without. And adjust the level of this parallel channel to taste. Let's leave it like that for now. One thing that I want to check is how much tom sound I have in my ambient mic, because usually it's too much for me. So we go select the ambient channel. It's not too much, it's pretty well balanced. Let's just EQ our ambient. This whoosh here, I'm not a fan of. So we remove some of it. But I want to do it while listening to the drum. You hear the ring? Let's, let's clean that up. And boost the high end a little bit. This is our ambient mic. There might be a little too high at in it. I want the high at a little drier. I rather turn up the direct channel.
and actually trying to distort it a little bit. And with distortion, I want to be safe. And I'm going to just clean up a little bit. Because I want it bright, but not hurting my ears. Better. So a little bit of distortion, a little bit of EQ on the direct signal on hi-hats. Let's listen to it. Level. That's fine. Now let's see if we can do something with the overheads. Let's solo them for a second. Um, we have just snare and mostly cymbals in the overhead. That's not really how I like overheads. I like to have a little more body on them. So we're going to create something closer to what I like to have in my overheads. So we send kick, snare, toms, hats, and overheads into a new bus. And we call it, I don't know. David's overhead. Don't comment on that. <laughs> and we are going to add a reverb to it, which I've already set up. Let's take a listen to it. Let's solo the channel. Now, according to the kind of song, the type of the song, the genre that you have, you can make this channel roomy like big reverb long decay and you can adjust pre-delay according to what kind of room you want to simulate okay we sent all of our drums to it but if we take a look at this and here i lowered the kick level going into that reverb let me put it back to zero and i'll show you what i mean see if I, if I send my drums at the same level, at Unity, all of them, the kick takes over the reverb. So the first thing is, I lower the level of the kick going into the reverb. Making it a little more balanced. So you basically have a side mix for the reverb, to, to, for the elements that you send to that reverb. Then, again, DK, reverb time, this is based on a song, just put these here. And then the other thing is EQing the reverb, the signals going into the reverb before hitting the reverb. So, I'm EQing everything, removing top and bottom end, and again, this boxy sound here we don't want that to go into the reverb and get lengthened we can use a little more top end as for the level of course this is taste what you want is to hear difference when you mute this channel let's do that That's about right for this example. And of course, reverb settings here are a matter of taste, whatever whatever you feel like is working for the track. This is pretty much it. Another thing that we can try is something weird on the snare. Like I said, there's no limit to what you can do. So let's send our three snare to another bus and let's try to stereoize it. And this can work or not, 
but we just want to try the modulation effects on Superior Drummer 3 because we have many phaser, tremolo, wah, and I'm going to try with Dimension D. Pay attention because this kind of trick can get messy really quick. This is modulating a little too much for my taste, so let's try Chorus and see if we have some more controls over it. All right, this is just a test. So I'm gonna slide this down. And because I don't want face problems with this channel, which is what could happen, I'm gonna add a little bit of pre-delay. So I'm just gonna get a room verb, turn everything down and see how it sounds. And give it just, I don't know, 15 milliseconds of pre-delay. eating the transient a lot so because i don't want to eat and blur the attack of the snare with this effect which is completely optional by the way you don't have to do it i'm just showing you things i'm using a transient designer before hitting the chorus and take the attack away so we have just the Sustain, chorus you sustain. Let's listen to it by itself. Okay, it's a weird effect. Like I said, not that you use it all the time. It's just something that I'm showing you. But let's see how it sounds. Turn the fader down. Especially on a bridge like this. You can go back to the normal, automate it. I would do, in conclusion, some processing on the drum bus. So let's start with the cue. Let's see if we can adjust. We need some adjusting overall for this snare. It sounds pretty good. Let's look for the crack of the snare. That's nice. You can use, let's say, 1.5. High end is fine. Can use a little more top based on the song. 1.5 again. I like the low end. Kick is a little high. Let's just turn the volume down. Let's try some compression, slight compression on the drum bus classic compressor. We don't need that much, we already have several parallel channel compression. I'm gonna stay at 2. Attack at 10, it's a good starting point. That's the low end pass. You know, this drum came out a little too clicky, so what I'm going to do is to turn down my mono crush bus a little bit. If I want to use distortion after my compression, I need to turn this down and hit the distortion plugin at a reasonable level. Let's try again the valve, which is my favorite so far. Turn the volume down. Uh, 
that's about right. Just take a look at the level. What you're shooting for here is increasing density a little bit without having a rise in nominal level. But I will probably not distort the whole drum bus in this particular drum. This is just an example. So without. I actually like how it sounds without it, especially the snare. But again, we started with really, really good samples from the get go. And that's key. The, the better you are, the more fitting for the song are the samples that you use, the less you will have to do in mixing. One piece of advice that I feel like giving you is once you're done inside uh, Superior Drummer 3, be confident of your choices and just bounce the least amount of files possible. Commit to them. So this is it for today. I hope you like this video, guys. But if you have any question, please leave them in the comment down below. Let me know and I'll get to them. Check out the other videos on Superior Drummer 3. And that's a wrap. This is it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it and I hope it was useful. Check out the other videos dedicated to Superior Drummer 3. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and please leave us a like and share the video around. Follow Mixbuzz TV on Twitter, Facebook to stay up to date with all the news, upcoming videos. Please keep supporting the channel by sharing the videos on forums, blogs, social media. Subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time.